Debbie's older brothers really adored her. Jeff was more of the protector. Terry was the playmate. Terry would um, uh, play dolls with Debbie. He would have tea parties with Debbie. He adored his sister. Jeff did too. Both of them just adored her. They took care of her. They watched after her. The first time that I realized that anything was wrong with Debbie is she woke up in the morning and I believe she was around 18 years old and she couldn't walk. And I had to help her get into a chair and I kind of drug her into the bathroom and that scared me. And I contacted a doctor and took her in and they ran tests and that was when we found out that she had rheumatoid arthritis. My experience is, as the older brother, I was one year older than Terry and four years older than Debbie. And um, I, I had a little bit, I was more athletic, a little bit more responsibility on my shoulders. Uh, if things needed to be done, it, it would fall in my, my place. All of us did work, all of us did our part, but uh, um, I was a little more capable than the others, so I think I, that fell on my shoulders. The three of us growing up, while we had a lot of difficult times that we were going through, music was a real highlight of our lives. And uh, um, we would go to concerts, and, and they, were, they were Christian music concerts. We weren't allowed to go to the secular music. So, But you know what? It was music. It was fun. It was, it was a time to get away. It was clean fun, too. And, and the three of us, we, we loved it so intently. And, and uh, it, it, sometimes you would get into songs that actually would speak what you're thinking or what you're feeling. And, and uh, so we'd attach to that. And I, I remember us driving when we had to either drive to work or drive to school, uh, which was a long distance anyway, listening to the music and just having a ball. We would be laughing to, to no end and just having a good time at that. Debbie and I were very close growing up, uh, closer than most uh, siblings, I think. Um, she came along three years after I was born, and, and we, um, I sort of was her little protector uh, up until a certain point, and then she continued to grow, and I stopped, and then she became my protector when I was about seven or eight, um, and then and then I kind of sprouted and, and went, but we were always close. Uh, I used to carry her books to class, and, and I would give her a little kiss uh, as she would go off to class when she was in kindergarten. and. Um, so yeah, we, we had a very close relationship. When I found out that, uh, that Debbie was diagnosed when she was 18 years old, she started showing symptoms when she was only 16. And uh, we were a little confused. At first we thought she was just trying to get out of work because my parents made us work a lot. And, uh, and, but then it, it didn't take long before we realized this isn't, she's not just you know, uh, faking this. this. This is something real. And then of course she was diagnosed with rheumatoid. And, um, and the helpless feeling was just terrible. And she began to go to the doctors and, and they started to try to put her on things, but, but it had progressed so much just in the two years of, of not having any treatment that uh, they said that it, it had already advanced to a point that uh, there was only so much they could do. And one thing I kept telling her was, uh, one of these days I'm gonna be rich and famous, Debbie, and I'm gonna do everything I can to make your life more comfortable. Having two older brothers growing up was a mixture of things. It was wonderful and it was terrifying. <laughs> And mostly it was wonderful. It was, I, I always felt like I had someone watching my back, which was very important. When I was 18, I woke up one morning and I could not walk. And there was no faking it. My, my ankle was like this big. It was huge. And my foot, I couldn't put any pressure on it. And that's when I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. Most people, they take for granted waking up in the morning, brushing their teeth, combing their hair, hopping in the shower. For me, I wake up and I go, oh my God, I gotta brush my teeth. You know, it hurts. I get a shower and I'm, I'm exhausted. And I'm, I'm like, well, I gotta comb my hair and my hair is freaking curly. And it's hard to comb, <laughs> but I have to do it. And it, it's exhausting. And I don't think my family was fully aware of, of, I don't think many people are, of the moment by moment difficulty that this disease brings people. When I was first diagnosed, Terry told me, he, he believed me right away. He was, you know, uh, it was a little harder for Jep because Jep was so freaking healthy. Terry had had bouts with mono, so he kind of knew what it was like to, to be sick. And he said, Debbie, one day I'm gonna be rich and famous and I'm gonna take care of you and I'm gonna pay for all your medicine and you'll never need for anything. Well, that day came, and I reminded him of that promise. <laughs> but when he went on America's Got Talent, 
He told me, he said, if I win this, uh, there was a medicine my doctors wanted to put me on, and it was $20,000 every six months. The first installment was $20,000, and my insurance company would not pay for it. It was too new. And so Terry told me, if I win this show, then I'm paying for that medicine. Call your doctor immediately. And the night that Terry won, I went up on stage and he hugged me and he pulled me close and he said, Debbie, call your doctor. We're getting you that medicine. And I did. And I called my doctor and I, I did the medicine and it didn't work. He wants so bad to heal me and he can't. The fame, the money, this illness has a mind of its own. You see someone that looks healthy put up a handicap placard and get out of their car, just because someone looks healthy does not mean that they're not dealing with agony on a daily basis. I think with any illness, anything, especially something that does not show, you feel so alone and so alone. <laughs> it breaks my heart as a mom that I can't do anything for Deb, that I can't help her, that I can't fix her pain. And the only thing that I can actually do is try to make her life a little bit easier and a little bit better. And if I feel like there's anything that I can do to make it easier for her, I will. My sister is my hero. She's, she's an amazing person. The, the, it's amazing that she lives with what she lives with on a daily basis. She makes people smile. She, whether if she's going through the hardest day that a person could actually face, she, she, she's always up. Even when she's down, she's up. I want people to know what this disease is, what it can, what it can do. First of all, to know the symptoms. If you have a family member that may have it, and, and it can strike at any age. There are young children who have it. I mean, we're talking two, three, four, even younger. And so uh, that's a little confusing to people. People always associate arthritis with old people. And that's just, that is absolutely not the case. My sister was 16 when she first started showing the symptoms. Um, it can strike at any age, and the awareness is is desperate. We need to be aware that this disease is out there, what, how debilitating it is, and continue to fight for a cure and to do everything we can. I'm, I'm going to try to raise as much money for the Arthritis Foundation as I can because I know millions and millions of people will be affected.